Hi there everyone, my name is Zach and welcome to my channel. Amongst other things, I'm a reenactor and a jouster, but I also enjoy painting miniatures. Um, this is a miniature I painted a while ago. Um, it's a Perry Miniatures War of the Roses Pikeman. Um, I actually painted it uh, during the first lockdown for a friend of mine called William. Um, it was his birthday during lockdown, so I thought I'd paint some something for him. Um, and I decided to do this. Um, one of the things that is really nice about the Perry Miniatures ranges is that the guys, um, Alan and Michael, uh, they're extremely knowledgeable about the period and um and the history of the thing um both of them um certainly were active reenactors i'm not sure if they still are um but they reenacted for a very long time as well as um being extremely accomplished sculptors um they used to sculpt back um back in the day for games workshop before um, starting up their own company um, and uh, they sculpted the original Bretonian line which um, that is one of my all-time favorite um, favorite releases back in uh, in the realms of Warhammer um, so it's it's hard to um, to look at these models and find any fault with them um, they uh, they really know their stuff from both a technical sculpting uh, standpoint and also a historical standpoint. Um, there's a couple of things that, um, to me, they're probably not quite wrong, but they're possibly reenactorisms that are overemphasized. So, um, for example, this model here is wearing leg armor but no greaves. I don't, I don't often see that. In historical sources, um, it is something that you see reenactors do quite a lot because um, greaves are really difficult to make, um, and so very often people um, will actually wear upper leg armor, but uh, um, but not the greaves. But um, historically, you tend to see people are either wearing um, just the knees or full leg armor. I've seen some paintings of people wearing just greaves, but very little of people wearing the um, upper creases um, with the knee protection, but nothing uh, on the lower leg. I think part of that is that um, from personal experience, actually wearing the greave really supports the upper leg and makes it much more comfortable to wear. Now, if you're a reenactor and you drive to the event and you um, you wear the armor for a couple of hours a day, then a little bit of discomfort is okay. Um, it's not too much of a problem. And actually, for the first little while, the uh, the leg armor isn't a problem. It's just that it slips down over time. Um, however, if you're a soldier on um, on the march then you either don't want anything on your legs at all or you want it to be as supported as possible because you can't stop um mid battle to adjust things you know the enemy isn't going to allow that um you also don't want to be stopping every half hour on the march or anything like that one of the things that i do really like about these models though is uh, is things like um, the options, the, this guy has got no gauntlets on, which is something you see a lot in art. Um, a lot of reenactors and, and modern people kind of um, are amazed to see the idea of someone not wearing gauntlets into battle. But uh, um, again, kind of a bit like the leg armor, you've got to remember that a very, very small percentage of the time spent as a soldier is actually spent fighting and so um, so wearing um, things like gauntlets and bevers they only they provide extra protection yes but 
it's not perfect protection and um, actually they can hinder you from doing a lot of other things um, that you might need to do like um, drawing a bow or um, adjusting your equipment so um, you know that we do see a lot of uh, soldiers actually um, in fact not just soldiers but also knights people who could afford these uh, this equipment we do see that sometimes them leaving them off um, presumably to allow for better um, better mobility or better hearing or, or um, the ability to hold something or manipulate something better see here I'm adding some shading now onto this model using my airbrush and some um, and some glazes um, one of the things that we forget about with medieval armor is that it very often was not as shiny as we tend to think looking in museums you would imagine that most medieval armor was extremely shiny um, unfortunately that is um, not uh, not something that we can trust um, for the most part you see um, there's plenty of reasons why the armor found in museums might be shinier than it originally was for a start um, our antique dealers can get more money for something if it um, if it is shinier you know that's what people want they want a knight in shining armor to stand in there in the corner of their room or in their um, private collection which many of these museums started out as private collections of rich individuals um, and so many um, antiques dealers actually uh, polished up the armor beyond uh, what it actually should be in order to get an extra uh, bob or two from it um, and some of them just did it because they presumed that's what it should have been like so you know we're not just talking about people um, changing things to try and make money. Some of them genuinely felt like they were doing the right thing. We also um, have several collections which were part of military bases until very recently. Um, and throughout the centuries, one of the best uh, best punishments that a commanding officer could give to one of his subordinates would be to go into the armory over there and polish something until I can see my face in it. So um, so it's very hard to know actually what the original um, surfaces of harnesses would have looked like. Um, so yeah, it, it's hard to say. We know that some uh, appear to have been left black from the forge. Some would have been roughly sanded and... Um, but not at a mirror polish. We do know that a mirror polish would be extremely, extremely expensive. So um, it seems very unlikely that a soldier of this standing, you know, a pikeman, obviously a reasonably well-off pikeman from the fact that he's got a brigandine and an arm and leg armor and so on, but a pikeman nonetheless, it seems very unlikely that he would um, have extremely shiny armor. So adding some glazes over the top to dial that back and, and make it uh, uh, a bit duller seemed appropriate for this, uh, um, this individual. This kind of thing, um, I, I don't know if this is something that would interest people. If you think this is interesting, then please do leave a comment. Let me know, like, share, subscribe, all of those things. You can see we're almost at the finished product here. And uh, um, I've recently actually bought some Victrix models, um, which is another company um, that does Dark, dark Ages and, uh, and Roman models mostly. So if you'd be interested in kind of a historical review and painting of one of those, then do let me know because uh, um, that's something that I can do very easily adding a tuft there and here's the finished example here I hope you like him it's pretty simple I painted this model in 30 minutes um, but I'm pretty proud of the, uh, uh, the finished result and hopefully you guys like it too 
Thanks for watching. Do like, share and subscribe and I'll see you in my next video.